Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll have our lesson number 100. Let's get going, shall we? Day number 100. Let's get going. The very first word we have, the very first word we have for today is an interesting word. It's a word that I've been wanting to learn for the longest time. It's a tricky word. The word is pathos. Pa pathos. It's a noun and it's always spelled with an S. Always spelled with an S. If there is singular or plural, it is always spelled with an S, pathos. I'm going to get rid of this marker. What are pathos? Pathos, I'm not sure if I should refer to it as singular or plural. I did not do a good job of learning that ahead of time. So I'm going to go back and forth and you can look it up yourself and find out whether strictly and technically speaking it should be singular or plural. As I said, I did not do a good job of learning that ahead of time. Let's start it together, shall we? Pathos. So I'm going to refer to it as it sometimes uh, in the singular form or sometimes in the plural form. I'll go back and forth. You should look it up and learn it yourself. Pathos is something. Pathos are something, if you like. Something that, that arouses that arouses or evokes or causes or causes a feeling of a feeling of pity sympathy or compassion if you like compassion compassion sympathy tenderness or if you like sorrow if you come across something it could be anything it could be anything at all it could be a piece of art it could be a painting it could be music it could be it could be a piece of literature as, as you're reading the book if you're as you're reading the scene in the book it could be seen in the movie anything that moves your emotion that causes you to feel pity or compassion or sympathy or tenderness or sorrow with the characters that are involved here or if there are no characters if it's just a piece of painting and you're very moved by it you say that it is full of pathos that scene was full of pathos that scene in that movie was full of pathos it evokes a lot of feelings you understand there are many other that's what it is the word was pathos it could be as I said a piece of art so a literature, it could be a movie, it could be a painting, it could be anything. If it stirs your emotion, it causes you to feel pity, sympathy, sorrow, compassion, tenderness. You said it was full of pathos. Pathos has a root of has a root of pathy. And there are many words in English language that we have with this root of pathy and we're going to learn some of them, two or three of them right now. But before we go into the, those words with the root of pathy, let's learn another word that, I, that, uh, that one comes across every once in a while, something that I had trouble with before. I'm, I'm going to have to erase this thing and we're going to learn this thing. The word is, they sound similar but they are not. Well, in a, in a sense they are. The word is, ethos. Ethos. It's also a noun. What are ethos? Ethos are our values, our our beliefs. Ethos are values or beliefs or what do you want to say? Values or beliefs or 
values or beliefs that that a group of people a group of people or a culture or a movement or an organization or an organization lives by lives by or believes in or believes in if there are certain values if there are certain ethics if there are certain beliefs that uh, this particular group lives by this particular group believes in if this particular group is known to believe uh, believe in this kind of values or ethics or 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 certain certain I'm looking for another word I can't think of any other words the beliefs the, the ethics the morals that you live by something that you strictly believe in something that you that you strictly believe in, this group strictly believes in this group this 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 uh, organization uh, this uh, what else do I say this organization, this movement, this culture, it believes in something. This particular culture, this particular organization, this particular movement believes in this particular thing vehemently, forcefully, emotionally, passionately. You said those are their ethos. Do you understand? For example, here's an example how you would use the word in a sentence. Here's an example. Our company, Our company or our religion or our group or our school or our organization could be anything has made has made environmental awareness part of its business ethos it has made environmental awareness part of its business ethos a word comes to my mind and before I share that word with you I'm not sure if you ever learned it it's a creed it's something that you that you firmly believe in I don't know if you ever learned about creed and have so many words beginning with C I'm not sure if I will be able to find it quickly C R E E D C R E E D It's something that you believe in the values of values or system or values or values or morals or ethics or creeds something that you very strongly believe in a group organization a firm a culture whatever it might be that those values are said to be their ethos I'm looking for the creed I don't find it here I'm trying to find it in a hurry and when you find it in a hurry, it doesn't, doesn't quite work that way. Anyway, that's what that is. Let's go back to the word pathy. And let's, let's look at some words with the root of pathy. Shall we? You said these are our ethos. These are, some things, these are some things that we believe in. These are our ethos. The very first word we're going to learn with the root of pathy is... Is pronounced and tip a t antipathy antipathy. Notice it's not pronounced antipathy. We don't say antipathy. It's antipathy and and tip a t. Let's dissect it, shall we? Let's dissect the word. The prefix here anti means against. Pronounce, uh, spell the word against properly. Against. And then we have pathy, which means feelings. So antipathy means you have feelings against something. It's a feeling of dislike. Antipathy means you have a feeling of dislike. 
you have you have bad feelings towards something, you're feeling against it. Antipathy. It's a feeling of it's a feeling of aversion. It's a feeling of or even if you can go as far as to say it's a feeling of hatred. If you hate something, if you dislike something strongly, you say I have antipathy towards it. I don't like it. Let's learn the word aversion, which is of course the synonym of antipathy. Let's learn it. First the pronunciation is a noun. O were jeune. Notice it's a Z again, aversion. Aversion is a strong dislike for something. A strong dislike for something. And the idiom is, and the idiom is, Averse to something. He is averse to traveling. What is he? He is averse to traveling, which means he has a strong dislike for traveling. He doesn't like traveling. He is averse. He is averse to traveling or he has aversion to traveling. You can use it as a noun. Aversion is a noun. He is averse to traveling or he has aversion to traveling. He is from the south. He is from the south. He has a very strong aversion to snow or cold weather if you like. He is from the south. He is not used to the cold weather. He is just visiting. He doesn't like this cold weather. He doesn't like the snow business. He has a strong aversion to it. Not aversion for it. Aversion to it. That's the correct idiom. Averse to. I'm averse to such and such thing. Let's move on. Let's learn one more word with the same root, pathy. We need the room obviously, we have to erase everything. Instead of, what was the word we just learned, I forgot now. Instead of antipathy, the word is, here is your pathy again, which, is means, to, which means to have feelings. And the prefix is simply a, a as in not. The prefix a here, which means not, as in asymmetric, a uh, asymmetric means not symmetric, asexual, asymmetric. Uh, there are many words with the prefix of a, which means not. Do you understand? So here, literally, it means a means not, and apathy is of course feelings. What is an apathy? Ap a p. It's a noun. What is an apathy? An apathy is when you have no feelings for something or someone. It means to have no feelings for for something or someone. Which is very different than antipathy. Antipathy means you dislike them, you hate them, you have you have a uh, you are a virtue to them. You cannot stand that person or saw that thing. That's antipathy. Here, you have no feeling for it, whatsoever. You you feel neither happy nor sad. You have no feeling towards it at all. Uh, which is which which in my opinion actually is stronger than than having antipathy because at least when you feel something for, uh, for somebody and you feel hatred or you dislike them or something, at least you have some emotions left for that person. When you become apathetic, that means you have left nothing left in you. You have no feeling whatsoever for that person anymore. You have none whatsoever. All the feelings have died down. It's apathy, which is a very sad state of affair. To show no emotion or interest. To show no emotions no emotions or interest. To show no emotion or interest. Some 
or something or or something or someone to have no feelings for something or someone to show no emotions or interest to show no emotion or in interest a good synonym for apathy would be let me erase the bottom part here because it's getting crowded the good synonym of apathy would be indifference if you are indifference to something you have no feeling for it you are neither happy nor sad you simply have no feeling of no emotions at all what would be the adjective this is the noun apathy is the noun what would be the adjective adjective would be The turnout in the election, the turnout in the in the recent election was very low. Be that's because the voters are so apathetic. They have apathy. They don't care one way or the other. They have they 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 have they have no faith in the system anymore. They do not trust the politicians. They have absolutely no faith left in the system. They don't bother to vote. They say, "What's the point? There's nothing good is going to come out of it." They have become apathetic. They have apathy. The voting was low in the recent election because the voters are apathetic. That's all I have to say. That was the end of our day number 100. And hopefully, if things work out as I hope, I'm going to continue with it with day number 101. There is a, there is a book that I want to that I want to go through uh, for the prep, uh, which is has to do with RN pre-entrance exam. If you want to be a registered nurse, you have to take an exam, a pre-entrance exam. And there are many, many vocabulary words in that book which are... Vocabulary words are vocabulary words. You understand there is no such thing as these are the words for the GRE and these are the words for GMAT or these are the words for SAT. Vocabulary words are vocabulary words. As long as you have a decent command of the language, it will help you raise your score regardless of which exam you're preparing for. Having good vocabulary is a must. It is a must whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or SAT or SAT or T's or SE or if you simply want to get into nursing school, the RN, RN program, the registered nurse. So I'm going to, actually I have it in front of me, I'm going to show it to you. Right here is the book, it's called RN Pre-Entrance Exam. And from this book I'm going to start doing the vocabulary words. That series is going to, be, which is going to begin day 101. It will simply say vocabulary words day 101, but the words are going to come out of this book. As opposed to the words that we've been doing so far on day 1 through 100, these are the words that I collected myself here and there through my reading. We're going to go through an exam here, we're going to learn all the vocabulary in this one. As I said, it's, they have an they have excellent collection of words, which will help you raise your score. Even if you're preparing for a different test, even if you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or SAT, as I said before. I'll see you on day number 101. Alright? Bye now.